That's good. That works. Okay. Good morning and welcome to the Hard Luck Show. I'm your certified host, Steve Lucky Luciano. Sitting across from me is my co-host, is Chumahan Bowen, American Indian, Southern California, and elegant barbarian. Huh? 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 And on sound, oh, blue eyes. Sean Lewis, certified audio professional engineer for the Hard Luck Show. And today we've got Big Pig Mike and King Salmon both handling visuals. Hey, That's right. Up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, yo? What's up, yo? Um, how's everything going? What, dude? What's not happening, brother? A lot, a lot of craziness. Yeah, I yeah. was perusing uh, some of the double XL. I was looking at double XL. I was looking at the source. I was looking at the main. Oh, yeah, the main thing that kept popping up was Fifty Cent talking shit about dude. Yeah. So the story mm-hmm. is about the one Fuji no one's ever heard of. No, it's not. No one's ever heard of. When you say that to me, it sounds crazy. Really? Yeah. I didn't because I. Pra, yeah, I'm, I'm like, a little well, older I... than you, and my my best friend went on tour with him. But Praz is. I mean, I, everybody knew who Praz was. Really? Yeah. I mean, dude. I know there was three, and I knew a Lauren Hill, and I knew the other dude. But then Praz was kind of like, well, who's that dude? I don't know. Praz. I didn't even know his name was. He was the only. I don't know. I mean, he might have gone on and done his solo album. That would make sense. But he didn't have the type of solo career that the two leads did. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. But because I never heard of. (laughs) Oh right. Well, but when Fuji's were together and touring, before they broke off and did their own thing, Proz was was right there in it. It's like Proz Michelle. Right. Right, some kind of French thing, and I get it, Haiti, right. France, but I right. just never knew that there was a dude. I had, dude, I called old Blue Eyes about it real quick. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Hey, man, he was in the library." Mm-hmm. First of all, I, I, can you call Blue Eyes at the library? It's like a, he's like, "Yeah, hey, I'm at the library." What's he studying? No, no, he's. I don't Let's know. Get my kit. You got books out. You got books out. <laughs> That's where he goes to stalk his next victim killers. He goes to the library and he uses their internet because they can't trace him. <laughs> and you then no. you told him Praz is working with the fucking feds. You, the worst. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something right now. Though yeah, ex- that's exactly what I said, right? Because I was like, well, what do you? First of all, I called everybody that I know, including Darren, right, who went on the Jerry Springer show. You didn't know that. What? He told me all the behind the scenes. Like, so I'm like, okay, what is everyone else thinking about, right? I call Salmon. Salmon's like, oh, dude, I don't fucking, I don't know, water. I think about water. I'm like, all right, I got to get out of here. I call Old Blue Eyes, and I'm like, bro, what's on the, t-? you know? And he's like, I'm in the library, man. I gotta... <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And I'm like, what about Praz? And he's like, who? And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, what about the Fuji? You want to talk about that? He's like, eh. mm. But yeah, 50 Cent. I didn't call Big Big Mike. Sorry, brother. I didn't call you. You should have. I should have. What would you have said? What are you? What is on your? What's current? Look at him. He's already Pop it in right there. Pop it. Come on. Yeah. What would you have said? It contemporary. The Indian calls you on a Friday, right before the show. What would you have said? On about Fifty Cent. But he has okay, to say forget right all now. that. All right, he no, already no. lost. He's already lost. Thank okay, you. going back to it, Fifty Cent. Mm-hmm. Right. Fifty Cent sent that post that said essentially like, yeah, I knew he was a rat. What? Yeah, against Pros. I knew he was a rat. I, that's why I never fuck with that guy. That's why I never fuck with that guy. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's a kind of a weird thing because it did. I, I mean, did you know anything about this before? I had no, n- no fucking way. <clears throat> I had no. That thing came out of the, and I started reading on it, and I was like, "What?" Right now, I've you know, obviously, we all are kind of clear on like. If you're a halfway fucking celebrity or kind of got some type of fucking notoriety, you know, people will uh, go yeah. ahead. There's there's people that will that, you know, if if they start, how do I put this? It's like B level celebrities can like somebody can finagle them. That's a con man and get with them and be like, look it. People will give you their trust because you're a celebrity. Right. And we could work you into different places. And if you were in on that, 
and decided to campaign that. A guy from the Fugees, you've heard of these types of scams before. You know what I'm saying? Right. The guy's this or he was that. or I, you know, You've heard that shit with like l- low level um, celebrities or one hit wonders or they, you know. You get what I'm saying? I do. I mean, they had it mixed up in some, some political shit, some over like weird stuff. Stuff that somebody that was at the front end might not be able to do because they've got too much to lose. Right. Right. Like you might not hear maybe, I don't know, who would you consider like a top platinum level star that would be like, yeah, I'm not getting involved in your weird fucking shit. I got my own money. I don't need to deal with that. Right. It'd be somebody way up there. Or how about somebody that used that has a good name, big history, but they're fucking running out of money. Yeah. Like you'll never hear Jay-Z involved in some kind of weird cockamamie scheme. Yeah, but you might catch Tony Yayo in the middle of some shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that makes sense. Like the heat went cold. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, right, the, the right. Heat and went... he has gotten caught in some shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, it's it's yeah. Listen, and I'm not saying anybody's doing, you know, like that kid Shine. Shine's like, his father was like a prime minister, and now he's in like deep politics over in, where is he from? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Blue. Shine? You were, Shine? You were just Shine. at the library. Shine, the artist. Mm, I don't know. I don't know who that is. Oh, well, I forget what country it is. Belize. Belize he's man. now, his dad was like the fucking somebody in Belize, prime minister or something like that? Yeah. Now he gets out of prison and he like finds his roots and he goes over there. Now he's in the political party. I mean, think about it. If you got some kind of heat in the States and you show up at some smaller ass country. That's what I'm saying. It's an easy sell, bro. Because there was stuff like that in this mix as well. I guarantee you, like the CIA is like, hey, man, tell you what, we can make it easy for you to get in there. All you got to do is just tell us what's up. We don't even care. We love Belize. We send all of our rich, fat, white people down there to go scuba diving. We ain't going to fuck with you. I'm just saying, there's, there's, you know, you can, yeah, that's weird. It's a weird thing. Yeah, but like. And they, the FBI will come in and flip people like that. Oh, yeah. The CIA comes in and flip. Who was that you, you were talking about that was a big CIA, uh, uh, a big, uh, you told me somebody, or they worked with the, was it Zsa, Zsa Gabor? <sighs> yeah, it might have been Zsa. No, maybe it was. It, the other the, wife the, of Trump. What about the, uh, no. the the chef? What's her name? Oh, oh yeah. Paula Dean. No, 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 no. The old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Paula Dean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that that old lady that was ugly looked like a right, man from right, England, but could right, cook real good. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. What was that? What was Julia that? Julia Child. Yeah. Julia Child. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get a clue. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Big, big mic, man. I stepped on something right there. Okay. Sorry, but they, they, uh, lo- yeah, they, they. <laughs> They fucking flip weird people that have fame, or well, they catch them in a situation. What about where... what about Bono or Bono or what was this? Sunny Cher, Sonny, and Cher, Sonny and Bono. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I mean, he was like he... part of Cher, and then all of a sudden he goes on to be a California fucking politician Fishing. for three decades, and then kill, right. and then runs into a fucking tree, tree. in the snow and kills himself. <laughs> yeah, the tree attack. <laughs> That's not funny. No, but right, it's fucked up. You made me laugh about that. But the point I of the matter, Ronald is, Reagan, bro. Come on, come on. Right? B hack actor, actor, right? Hanging out with chimpanzees, acting like he's a tough cowboy, but the kind of cowboy that has like a handkerchief around his neck. You know what I'm talking about. Thick midsection. It's not yeah, it's yeah. not really tough, right? And they're like, look, man, your career's in the shitter, Ronald. We caught you with those kids. <laughs> we caught you with the Dalai Lama doing naked yeah, push-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're gonna work for us. I think there's I think there's I think some of some people fall into those places too. It might be more pervasive than you think though. Cause I mean, think about it. When you look at some of the talent, I'm not obviously nobody we like, but just when you look at it, you know, who's the ones that get in there? Like, are are the ones that get in there really better than the other ones? No. So is there people at the top that you know, they're not even in front of the cameras, but whoever it is at the top is like, hey, we don't want that one. We want this one. Otherwise, your merger's not going to go through. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's going to be some problems with the paperwork. Sure. Right? Now, Pross, Pross Michelle, the third Fuji, third F- Fuji number three, he got convicted. He was on trial. How long has this been going on? Dude. Like, probably, like, a long time. A couple of years. This whole thing's been going on a long time. 
Now, Prince Michel, I, I think these dudes are really from Haiti. And it is worth noting that Haiti is like right by the United States, mm-hmm. right? Like it's, it's kind of like a territory or whatever. Is it a U.S. territory? I think it is. And, and on top of that, though, remember like last- Kind of like Puerto Rico? Yes. And Dominican. Then, yeah, it's all, but it's also like the worst human aid suffering that goes on there. Somehow Bill Clinton was there not too long ago. Like everything is kind of weird. And remember, <clears throat> in Haiti not too long ago, somebody went up into the, like, the president's mansion and shot the president and his wife in bed. And they still don't know who that was. Just some commandos. So you don't. Wow. Yeah, it's a heavy scene, bro. Right. So the Fuji's got present. Yeah. Him and his wife in their bed, and, and she nobody survived, knows but she had sh- gunshots in the chest, and she's n- somehow, you know, she's not like in, you know, trying to help anybody figure out who it was. I'm sure they got to her and were like, "Look, you dodged a bullet for real, and you're gonna let this thing just die where it is." Or you're going to wake up in a basement at the bottom of the frozen tundra of the Crimea with electrodes hooked up to your gonads. Mm-hmm. So she's like, yeah, cool, I'm out. I don't need that mm-hmm. trouble. So these guys come out of that, and now you got this guy, Prost Michelle. So what's he doing? Like, what's going on, right? Why is he get? he got 20, he's sentenced to, he's facing 20 years in federal prison. Oh, I thought you said he got sentenced. He's facing 20 years. He's found guilty. He was found guilty. He was found guilty. So that's done. And he's facing 20 years for political conspiracy, fraud, money laundering. How does a guy like that get so deep into it? Ah, it's a good question. One of the things that they... So so what 50 Cent was referring to was that Pross Michel, during, in his criminal... What? Listen... What does every criminal attorney advise his criminal defendant when the defendant says, I'm going to take the stand and I'm going to tell my story? What's the, what's the advice? You shut up. Oh. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut. Don't fucking do that. All right. Well, this guy, Pross Michelle, said, I'm going to take the stand. And he took the stand. And after all that, he got found guilty by a jury. Mm. Now, he's a real genius. <laughs> And you got to think about this. When he was on the stand, what 50 was responding to was that he said, I voluntarily gave information to the FBI. So technically, he's not saying I was an informant. He's saying the FBI didn't know what was going on. And he walked in through the front door and said, guys, I got something you might want to know. I don't know if that's worse. I don't know if it's worse. Is it worse to be a rat where they got you and you're just trying to save your own ass so you spill the beans? Or is it worse that nobody's got you? All right, hold on. Go ahead. Back up a minute, partner. Go ahead. I can tell you right now, just off of, based off of what you said, yeah. that this pros guy's full of shit. Right. And that's why. That And the reason why is... If this guy's breaking all these laws, why the fuck is he walking in and giving the feds a present? You know why he's walking in and giving the feds a present? Because he just fucked up. He just fucked up. And he knows. The fuck up might be small, but he knows his name. He's attached. It's like, ah, this right here is going to come and fucking haunt me in a couple years. This I can't get out of. But what I can do is I can go run it in early ahead of everybody and act like I'm doing something good. Maybe they'll go easy on me. That's exactly what happened. I know it's what happened. You are fucking 100% correct, yeah, sir. Of course, bro. That only works one way. Criminal doesn't all of a sudden become a nice guy out of the blue. <laughs> oh, I'm going to change my life. I'm fuck, <laughs> fucked up and knows it. I'm going to get ahead of this thing, out in front of this thing. Right. Course. It was all part of my plan to reveal this. I'm fighting crime. I'm not a part show of it. you guys. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So he came in. So the money? What do you mean the money? Well, the money got spent while I was trying to put this case together. It was for part you of the operation. I had to do it, you know? I had to, make I had to buy look. the yacht. I had to get. <laughs> they had to believe I was with them. Right. If I didn't <laughs> fuck these hookers and do all this cocaine, they wouldn't have believed that I was with them. Yeah. I, did. I mean, it's not. I mean. How many vice cops do you think have said the same thing? Like, oh, listen. Yeah, yeah. 
I know it got a little crazy in there, but I had to, I had no choice. I know I disappeared for like three days with no contact. <laughs> it was part of the cover. What do you mean? <laughs> Did you want to can get these guys or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sacrificed myself, my moral <laughs> dignity. <laughs> I'm, hey, bro, by the way, dude, just on an off subject real quick. Yeah. Last night I'm at a, a restaurant called My Two Cents. It's on Pico by Hauser. It's actually a great restaurant. You guys should check it out. My Two Cents. My girl wanted to go, and they've got some kind of fried, they've got a fried chicken, and it's, it's uh, 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 what is that? She can't have that certain thing that's in starch and flour. Gluten. 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 And she's gluten, and they do like a fried chicken that's gluten free, right? And I'm like, all right. And we go over there, dog, and we have we have dinner. Yeah. And we're sitting there, and they close at nine, and they serve us our food at like eight forty. But they're cool. The owners there, um, and they're like, how's, how's how's everything good? Yeah, yeah. And we're eating. Hey, you know, I'm missing some teeth in my mouth, you know, and I'm chewing on this chicken. Oh, I no. guess <sighs> I might have tried to take down too big of a piece, right? Now this <laughs> happened fucking like two years ago. First time in my life, but. So I go to swallow. Oh, no, no. And I can't, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm like, I, and I'm not looking over at her. She's eating. She doesn't yeah. know anything's wrong yeah, yet, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I grab the water, and I fucking take this of water, and I go to swallow, and the water goes all around it, <laughs> but the fucking chicken doesn't move. And I'm like, Fuck. So now I can't get air. So now I stand up from the table. Like scanners. Like scanners. And I stand on the table and I'm like, and I go, and I kick it out and I go, and I stick my finger down my throat. Right there. And I tried to push it down. (laughs) Down. Easy, bro. Like to get it down past the, right? And when I do that, bro, my fucking throat goes like this. Look, Juman. Yeah, I'm listening. It oh, just God. tightens up as soon as I tried to push it down. And, I, and I'm telling you, bro, my fingers are all the way down. And I tried to, like, force it down. And it didn't budge, bro. It, oh. like, it, it just stayed there. My throat closed up. On it. On it. So I'm like, my next thought is, like, the restaurant's <laughs> for, I think these people are looking at me, but I'm not sure. <laughs> My girlfriend's like, baby, baby. (laughs) And maybe it's about a second before panic. And I remember like the last time this happened, like I didn't do like a heimic on myself, but it was (laughs) almost You jumped on your heels? I went, I remember it came out. Okay. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm thinking, (laughs) but if you are around, if I start to lose conscious and go down, it's a good chance they're going to get the fucking paramedics over and I'm going to be just... I don't know what kind of gambling calculation that is. Yeah, I was like, I hey, couldn't stop it. I was just looking around as everything started to tunnel vision. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, if I do go down, everybody's seeing me in their comments. <laughs> but right at the last minute, I go... <clears throat> I remember I remember to cough. I remember just to <laughs> cough it up. Stop it, dude. Hey, dude, I cough and that thing shot out. <laughs> just like... Exactly like the, the a couple years ago when the same thing was happening. Fucking shot out, dude. Bunch of water shots. So it looks like I just threw up, right? <laughs> oh, and no. everybody in the restaurant's like on silent mode. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and Monique doesn't miss a beat. She's like, Are you okay? I go, yeah, yeah. She, and she starts wiping up my whole mess. Oh. With a napkin. She don't give a fuck. She loves me. And uh, I go, I go, that's all right. And I start wiping up with a napkin. They're like, are, are you okay? Is there any, do you? I'm like, no, no, I just need some napkins. I need a mop. I'm like, just give me some napkins. <laughs> fucking... It was crazy. But I almost died over that chicken yeah. you got. God I almost damn, fucking bro. choked out at fucking my two cents. Food's great, though. So anyways. Yeah, that's a hell of a record. I, hey, you see, they're getting two <clears throat> shows in one. All right. <clears throat> Lucky almost chokes on fucking gluten fried chicken breasts. Was it a chicken breast that you were eating? Yeah, 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 it was. When it shot out, did it like hit a drink or anything and knock it over? No, I was standing up when it shot out. It shot out with a little bit of grits. They had these great grits, bro. Huh. Uh, shot out with water, grits, and a big old piece of chicken. And she goes, what is wrong? Afterwards, she goes, dude, that piece of chicken was like that big. What were you? Hey, hey, and what are you, crazy? And I look at her and I go, hey. You see fucking how many teeth I'm working with here, man? I wasn't choking on food in my 20s when I had my grill. She started yeah. laughing. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. 
So, yeah. But yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, you and I both have acknowledged it on the show. I mean, we're some pretty crazy <coughs> avid eaters. Like once she goes, you need to slow down. You need to slow down. I go, am I constantly choking? And she goes, no. I go, then what the fuck are you saying? Right. Even right. a wolf chokes every once in a while. Right. What the fuck? That is a little. Jesus Christ. Let's add some energy to the whole night. Anyway, so yeah, so Pross Michelle. Pross. Back to Pross. <laughs> Back to the Wonder Fuji. if he's. Well, he has had some close calls. He's going to be choking on some bones pretty soon. Yeah. Choking on some chicken. He's going to be choking that chicken pretty soon. They're going to be asking him to take his teeth out pretty soon. Uh, so what 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 happened with Prague? Okay, so he goes up. So, story go. Yeah, so he goes up there. Right here yeah, just eat Help one me. at a time. All right, one at a time. Jeez. And if you do got to. Hey, hey, Mike, if I start hey, choking out. Bro, yeah, point, point, point if, if you start sorry. coughing. Hit cough me, dog. Just just hit me, dog. <laughs> There's only <laughs> four. Two just stuck in my nostril. Fucking shit. You know, Juman, Juman, grab and be like. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lubricated already. Yeah. Yeah. Spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I like it. You like Italian flavor now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, all right. Italian this candy. is Siciliano. Okay. Hey. No, but so so he goes up there. He goes, yeah, I went in. So what was Pross Michel doing? What was he doing? What's going on? I thought Why? the guy was fucking living high on the hog from his Fuji's money or producing other guys or started some Haitian record label or... So isn't that what you would think? I mean, that's kind of what you think. Like, maybe he's the silent genius behind. Right, because you haven't heard from him. Yeah, you don't know what he's doing, right? Lauren Hill's got her own thing. She's like right. cashing in on her shit. What's the other guy? Jean-Paul or Mikhail Sean or Michelob. What's his name? What's the other guy? Sean, you're the rap oh, music guy. guy. Who's yeah, the third? I can't remember it. Isn't it Jean something? No. Are you sure? RuPaul. His name is RuPaul. Oh, who's the guy? <laughs> Who's it? Wycliffe Jean. Wycliffe, Wycliffe, I told you, Jean. Right. Wycliffe hey, Jean. Hey, Wycliffe. He was involved in some shady shit too, right? Didn't he get like fraud? Didn't fraud charges get put on him or something? I might have, I might have, was he fucking with Haitian Jack too? <laughs> no, there was some shit going on. Haitian right. Jack. Hey, it's Haitian Jack. I love that. Um, but so okay, all right, go ahead. So right. hey, Pross Michelle. What happens? All right, so he goes up there, he does this whole thing, right? So he goes where? He goes on the stand uh, and tells us He was right. why Clef, John was accused of stealing Haitian charity money. Fuck. Dude. And they need that money down there, dude. They ain't playing. That's whack. That's whack. That's kind of crazy. So. That might be why you don't hear too much from him. Yeah, well, he ain't taking the stand and talking to the FBI. No, I don't know. That's crazy. He ain't trying to bring the money back talking about these people are ripping this fuck in my country. <laughs> I'm one of them, but I... <laughs> Listen, I'm going to skim about 20% of the time. They don't need it. They wouldn't know what to do. My legal name was on one of them wires, but that was all part of it so that I could get to Hey, that. dude, it's funny you say that, right? So I looked into the Pross Michelle thing, and I'm like, so what the fuck is this dude up to, right? Like, what's going on here? And you're right. There's this, like, sweet spot for celebrities. Yes. Where it's like... They're not really the one that anyone gives a shit about, yet they're not normal either, right? They have some kind of access. So what's going on is this guy named Joe Lo, a Malaysian scam artist, the wolf of Malaysian Wall Street. That's this guy. This guy helped the prime minister scam $4 billion from Malaysia, Singapore. Stole it. The Sovereign Wealth Fund, it was called. And the way that they were able to skim all this money off, right, was through a, a different, couple of different banking techniques. One of them was to create fake bank accounts with names like funds you've heard of with like one letter off. Like BlackRock Street. And you heard of BlackRock Investments. And so right. you were looking at you might not even catch that, right? And the other one, there was like, you know, other ones, it was like Schmenk of America. Like in, in the same almost like whatever. And it was all fake. <laughs> it was all fake bank accounts that then went into, you know, the Cayman Islands and then somehow wound up in this guy Jolo's pocket and, and the prime minister. And it took years and the Department of Justice had been looking at this for like years, trying to figure out what happened to $4 billion, right? The Department of Justice? Because some of that money went into the United States, right? BlackRock and Investments is actually a very well-known private equity fund that is maybe the biggest fund 
in the world maybe, right? And they use computerized AI techniques before anyone else was to predict what markets and shit are going to do. And they made a bank account that was like BlackRock Street, something slightly off that looked the same. Mm -hmm. And nobody caught it in time. And then what they would do is they would transfer. They call it layering. They transfer one bank, transfer back, transfer back, transfer back like 18 times. And so you don't know where it originated. There's 18 layers of uh, wire transfers of differing amounts back and forth. So you can't, it would take you forever. You need like a whole accounting team to figure out where the shit went and where it came from and who sent what to who. And yeah, so the Department of Justice was involved because U.S. facilities were used and I think some U.S. investors were scammed. And so absolutely, right? Because if they can do that, the Department of Justice can freeze funds. So this guy did all of that, right? Some of the money went to Pross Michelle from this Joe Lo Malaysian scam artist guy. Some of the money financed the film, The Wolf of Wall Street. You can look it up. That's crazy. Scammed Singaporean Malaysian money was used to fucking finance the Wolf of Wall Street. They even like spent lavish amounts on yachts and all this shit. And in fact, they claimed they still have lost a billion dollars. The Malaysian authorities, the U.S. authorities, international authorities, because it's going between different countries. And we all have agreements with certain countries. So we also have to help them prosecute. They said that it, uh, 700 and something million dollars was wired to some Saudi investment fund. When they went to the Saudi company, they looked at the, the, the records and it did. It said to this investment fund, but that investment fund doesn't exist. And they still don't know where a billion dollars was. And they were able to find 700 million dollars in the prime minister's own personal finances, even including buying artwork and hiding that and buying jewels and hiding that. So this guy who masterminded it was this fat clam-faced dude, sweaty clam-faced man named Joe Lo. J H O L O W. You look at him you're like, oh, "That dude does look like a scam." J-Lo. Kind of. Kind of. Don't be fooled by the rings that he's got. Hmm. And this dude, right, is still in hiding. Hmm. He went to China. <laughs> And they can't get at him. <laughs> he's in China and nobody knows where he's at. Mm. He went into the restaurant that one night and then no one ever heard from him. So he, right, used some of that money, funneled it directly to Pross Michelle to go to galas, right, start chumming up politicians because China wants a dude named Guo Wang Wei. Guo Wang Wei. If you paid a little bit of attention to the news, you kind of saw that Steve Bannon and this Chinese dude got arrested for fraud, defrauding Americans uh, for the wall and all this other bullshit, like a billion dollars, right? <clears throat> they arrested both of them, Bannon and the Chinese guy. Now, the Chinese guy's in exile in the United States from China because he talked mad shit against the government. Mm -hmm. So he comes to China, runs a scam with Steve Bannon, they get a billion dollars, and they get busted. And in fact, the FBI or whatever raids this dude's penthouse in New York, this Chinese dude's and while they're raiding it, a fire breaks out. Inside the apartment? Inside his penthouse, while they were looking for evidence, there's a fire at the same time. Fuck. 18 floors up. <clears throat> It's, there's no way that that's not destruction of evidence. Am I wrong? Right? There's no coincidence. <laughs> He's in custody. The Chinese dude's in custody. Bannon gets arrested. He gets taken down. And on the 23rd hour of President Trump's presidency, he pardons Bannon. Hmm. And Bannon's out. He's like, well, gosh, Guo, I mean, it's where the fucking cookie crumbles, I guess. I mean, I'll try to send help. And that dude's still in prison. So, the money was given to Pross Michelle. Let's uh, back up and, and let everybody know who Bannon was. Uh, in, Steve Bannon. In, in regards to Trump and everybody. Yeah, Steve Bannon was the Kathy Bates of 
the Trump organization. He's kind of a heavy set, masculine, kind of gr- grizzled face with bad hair. He was the campaign manager, got Trump elected, was in the White House for about one, two years, and then they had a falling out and Bannon bounced. He's also the guy who ran Breitbart, right? He's a right-wing conservative Tea Party nut, a weirdo, up to shenanigans, but somehow he's able to get cozy with one of the biggest Chinese exiled frauds ever. Mm. And Trump pardons him on the operation and Chinese guys left hanging in the wind. And now, Joe Lo from Malaysia is giving Pras Michel a hundred million dollars. Like over that. To try to get the U.S. to take the Chinese guy and send them to the Chinese authorities. Somebody in China put this whole thing together in order to get the scam artist sent back to China so they could fucking shock his little Chinese balls. That's what it's all about. And Pras Michel donated money, like, I want to say, like, I don't know, like a million dollars, a ton of dough to the Obama administration to try to convince them to extradite this Chinese fool back to the CCCP. And he did it through paying people to go to these galas where they have expensive, like, oh, $50,000 a, a plate. No, no, all that bullshit. He funded multiple individuals to do that without declaring it or telling anybody that's what he was up to. So that's, you know, on paper, it doesn't look like he made a, a larger political donation, but when you actually add it all up, he's supposed to register and he's not supposed to be doing that. That's undue influence in the political process. Obama administration... Whatever, they took the money, but nothing happened. Chinese dude still stays here. Trump comes in, tries to do the same thing. Does exactly the same thing. Trump administration takes all, they all take the money. Thank you. Chinese guy doesn't go to China, stays here in jail. Hmm. So, right, this guy gets caught up. They finally bring him in. And that's somewhere along this this timeline, after the Trump administration and and then all of the investigations. Now think about all the investigations that got went into Trump over the last like seven years, right? It's a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So, so what you say makes sense. Somewhere along that, somebody found these uh, extra political donations that don't make sense, and they all somehow finally, when you trace the accounts and everything else, it leads back to Pras Michelle. And now they got him, and they're gonna put him on the rack. So he came in and was like, hey, you should hear this. We got to get rid of this. This is not good. So when he was on there and they asked him about the money, they go, well, so why do you think they were giving you all this money? Didn't you, did you think this was a gift? And he's like, oh, I just thought it was free money. (laughs) So the jury comes back and says he's convicted. He's facing 20 years. Does that make him a rat? Does he work and want the FBI? Maybe worse. Maybe worse. Maybe maybe he is a foreign agent. But you know what's weird in the... Go ahead. Well, I can see uh, something I happening. just feel like if they got this guy... If Listen, think about this. This guy's a fucking singer. Right. A celebrity. Right. If they got this guy on one thing... Right. And was like, listen, man, we're going to fucking work with us. We're going to have you work with us, and we're going to make this time go away, or we're going to help you. Or right. A guy like that, who ain't part of the game, or street life or anything, he's going to be like, I'll do anything. Mm-hmm. I just don't let me go to prison. They might have played his ass and been like, all right, go do this, go do that, get this. Who knows how much fucking testifying and how much wiring he wore at the end right. to maybe get himself out of it. Who knows how many people he's taken down. But... That that seems like that guy would be an easy guy, a guy like that, to catch them doing something and then reel them in. Because those guys ain't built. They're not cut from that cloth. Uh, you know, the thing is, is we're talking about a, a high-level espionage aspect, right? You know, is there 
it, are there spies in Malaysia stealing money and using that stolen money to try to influence the politics in the United States? Is there spies from China? Do, do the Americans actually have guys like Pras Michel to pose as people willing to work to find out the rest of the networks? How dirty is the whole entire game and what's the ultimate goal, right? That's what you got to be thinking. You're right. This is not just some prosecution of the guy because he broke the law. You're a hundred percent correct, nah, bro. And let me let me just say this on this show right now. Listen up, everybody. When you start hearing about Bannon, right? About Trump, right? About all these motherfuckers. These are huge defrauding the American people, the right. governments. All these crazy banking. Now think about this. Look at all these motherfuckers that are getting cracked. You're going to tell me that Steve Bannon and, and even Trump, all these guys, they just did what they got busted for? No way, dude. And you're also going to tell me that these guys would have the nerve to do that without them seeing it already happening around them and people getting away with it for years. Bro, there's so much shit going on we don't have a clue on because they're not going to prosecute them. They're going to make it go away. There's shut up money. There's They're too high profile. They get, there's so much shit, bro, going on. And that's just in America. Who knows how much further out people are getting over on us and we're getting over there. But I'm telling you, man, this whole political, I think the whole political structure is fucked and corrupt. I think... I think there's so much going on. I, I, I think this is a big lie. I think me, we're, we're printing more money. Let me read. Printing money. Buddy. Let me read this. Let me Go read ahead. this, and I want to hear your responses to this. Guo Wangui, a self-exiled Chinese tycoon, so he he exiled himself before he got in trouble in China, with close leaks to prominent Trumpist Republicans, including Steve Bannon, has been indicted on twelve counts relating to an alleged one billion dollar fraud. The charges announced by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York on Wednesday include wire fraud, securities fraud, bank fraud, and money laundering. Now, really think about this. The Southern District of New York was prosecuting Trump before they hired uh, Bill Barr to come in and shut it all down. So now they're getting the guy that was working with his right-hand man. Dude, I bet you the investigation that they've turned up going all the way back to that old ass fucking Marine dude, whatever his name was. I bet you they got way more. They know way more than they're able to prove. And they're like just trying to figure out how to get all this shit out. I mean, Guo is charged with lining his pockets with the money he stole, including buying himself and his close relatives a $50,000 square foot mansion, a $3.5 million Ferrari, a $3.5 million for fucking Ferrari, and even two $36,000 mattresses. Jesus fucking Christ, oh, dude. Those mattresses must just have like Viagra in them or something. I have a girl was just telling me about these great pillows and they're $160 for two pillows. I was like, I'm going to motherfucking Ross for my pillows. <laughs> right. You know, like <laughs> pillows. I got to me $36,000 for a mattress? Jesus. Yeah. Somebody's getting murdered for that. Man. <laughs> and financing a $37 million luxury yacht. I mean, these guys are real. Like Imelda Marcos style, right? Yeah, Imelda Marcos style, Philippines. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, and okay, so that's that guy, right? Mm -hmm. and so it's it's just insane to me that right there's this much money run going back and forth, and you've got these sort of B level celebrities involved. I mean, doesn't that make you wonder, like? You know, what was Trump doing in North Korea when he went over and shook that fat dude's hand? Uh, right? What was Dennis Rodman doing in North Korea? You remember when he went to, like, out of the blue? You never, that dude, Dennis Rodman, he had Ronald McDonald hair and crazy tattoos, was fucking crazy bitches and breaking his dick, and yet somehow <laughs> he was like, you know what? I'm going to go to North Korea. What did that, Right? How is it not that he's, they're not, there aren't CIA <laughs> He was going out there to cut more deals, bro. CIA agents, man. He was, Trump was out there to cut more deals. Yeah. I like. A, so now I'm almost convinced 
that all of our enemies we probably work with. We probably work with Iran. We probably work with North Korea. Like we talked about the other show, El Salvador. I mean, we convinced them to get on the cryptocurrency <laughs> and that's still their main currency, bro. And, and, and I don't know, right? I don't know. But, you know, are there certain organizations that operate out of El Salvador? Certain groups? Maybe they do. Could they use a digital currency that nobody can trace? Maybe. Is it all part of a, a larger overall operation? Right. It's possible. I mean, I'm not one to speculate on all of that, but Jesus fucking Christ. If you made El Salvador then all on digital currency, everybody and their mother be starting to go down there to go do business. And maybe a lot of people did. And right. Maybe a lot of people are. Right. It's in a perfect location for right. a lot of things, let me tell you. Right. So it's in a great location to... Do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. You well, know, Salvador, Honduras, you know, like... Areas like that, you can reach everything from there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on a certain level, I kind of looked at what 50 said, and I thought, you know, that's smart for 50 in one way because it got him a lot of press for nothing, just talking shit about this process, right? Everybody. I mean, that, that thing went viral. Everybody was like, yeah, 50 said he's a rat. Blah, blah, blah. And, it's, and it may or may not be true, but on a PR level, that's just smart business for 50. That put him back right in the news cycle like that. He didn't have to do anything except say, I didn't fuck with that dude. But, bro, that the music business, I'm going to say, man, there's a lot of weird levels to the music business. Yeah. And I don't know. I was just talking to somebody the other day. I'm like, man, I just don't know. I don't know if you can make it. Like, how are you going to do the music business is very different, too. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the music business, say, in the 70s, yeah, compared to now, it's all, everything's different, dude. I mean, think about that. That's true. You had to buy music up I'd, until the internet. You had to go physically go buy music. At a store. And then go, right. And then go put it on to listen to it. You had to install it to listen to it. God damn, that's Buy crazy. it, and then we'll take it home, whether you put it on your record player or anything. You, you had to have something to listen to it, too, with. Right. You, could, you couldn't buy a cassette unless you had a cassette player. You couldn't buy an album unless you had a record player. So, I mean, think about all that. Even down to the CD, you had to have the CD player. The only way you could instantly sample this music would be hear it on a radio if the radio decided to play it. And there's like a ton of stories where the radios were paid off to play this, not play Dude, that. Dude, the payola, bro. Pay Rolling Stones, fucking Joe Isgirl and Arnold Azoff. Dude. They broke the fucking Eagles. They were fucking breaking arms and legs all through America at the radio stations, bro. And you know what's crazy about that, Ron? I was thinking about that, right? And then the other day I was thinking they about- They didn't have to do that, do that for Eagles. Eagles music was great anyways, right? Right. Go, but go ahead. No, it's true what you're saying. Still, right? And then Hotel California. Who do you have to fucking? Who, who in the world do you, know, did you, you gotta, gotta go in and say anything? Why? More than here's a new album. Right. I would think, but it wasn't like that. Why do you? Why you got? It wasn't on? like that. It was political. Some motherfuckers weren't gonna play, and the Eagles weren't as big when they were getting broke. Think about that, dude. The Eagles is one of the few bands where they changed the fucking musicians and shit in it, and it still worked. Yeah. And I can't even get started on Hotel California, bro. Like that's a whole topic that make me go crazy right now. But Desperado, <laughs> come on, you're I mean, singing. You're that's old shit, Blue man. Eyes. Desperado, that's gonna be played at this man's funeral. Desperado came in alone. He's leaving alone. Huh. This guy right here. There you go. One of the. I mean, come on. One of the all-time greatest, greatest groups, greatest music ever. And uh, I don't care how many times you heard Hotel California, it really is a great fucking song. And, uh, yeah, yeah, agreed. I mean, if you're not cleaning your six-shooter to this, right? You got a vest. Maybe you got your holsters over your shoulder as you're leaving. Maybe you're just crying in the doorway, doing nothing. Crying in the doorway, doing nothing. Thinking about, am I going to come in and offer this up to the FBI because they're going to catch me anyway? And I could head this thing off. Scrolling through pictures of you and your love before she left your ass. 
right? Um, <laughs> Hungry so, chicken <laughs> trying to figure out, like, am I going to die in this restaurant or am I going to get this chicken out? Well, Braz, you're really fucking, I don't know about this guy, man. I don't know how you have a fucking huge career like that and then get caught up. Oh no! Do you think Lauren Hill's like? See, I try to tell these motherfuckers. This uh, I've dude heard she's no crazy. I've, I've heard she's completely crazy. I've heard the same thing, but a lot of people. I heard you can't look at her when you're talking to her. I've heard that too. She's, she's fucking crazy. fine too, though. I mean, I think she's fine anyway. I don't think she's fine. You no. don't, yeah. man. I look at that fucking miseducation, no. and I'm like, man, fucking miseducate yeah, me, I man. I, fucking her. Her. I do, but yeah, you're right. I've heard the same things you heard. Like she's mm. crazy, hard to deal with. But then. She might have made one of the one. I mean, where do you? Hey, blue or blue eyes? Where do you oh, rank? Eyes. Where do you rank that album, Lauren Hill's album? Where do you put that? I mean, that's a female artist. It's like more than hip hop, right? I mean, in my mind, yeah, yeah. where do you put that? Where the fuck do you put that? I think like that album probably be in the R and B Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? Like I I listen to that album and I'm a guy and I don't. <sighs> Sometimes when you're a guy and you listen to chick music, it's a little weird. And it's me. I'll say that. All right. I'm, I'll am i admit it. I'm like, I ain't going to listen to Pat Benatar by myself. That's weird. But Lauren Hill, I will. Who? Not only will I listen to it, but I'll feel her anger towards dudes. I'll be listening to that and be like, yeah, that, that is true, man. That, that, fuck that. And I almost put her up. Maybe I do. That album. Not everything she's done. Cause, and I'm going to come out and say this. Killing Me Softly, I think they fucked that shit up. I like the original. I don't need anybody to fuck with it. I know that it was a hit. Fuck what? Killing Me Softly. Oh. I mean, they, you know, one time. I don't need to hear you say that a bunch of times. I hate that. Yeah. Sorry. One time. I, yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Just let the, someone sing. But. But. I put that album up next to Bob Marley albums. That one album's up there. In terms Ooh. of originality, grit. It's a great album. Uh, I agree with you. It's a great album. I'm not saying it's hard. I'm just saying it's a great album. I'm not saying it's hard either. It is a great album. You can't knock that. She, I've heard from enough people. She's crazy. She's fucking full-fledged nuts. Yeah, I mean, she did, well, did she ever make a, uh, an album after that follow-up? Anything close to that? Uh, no, that yeah. was major. You got to remember, <clears throat> man, that was back when her, like her... Alanis Morissette. Holy they dropping, shit. They were dropping. Those chicks sold 20 million albums. Dude, think about that. Alanis Morissette and fucking Lauren Hill. Those women were selling 20 million fucking uh, albums, bro. I Google that shit. I, it's gnarly, dude. Gnarly. That's big money. Not only that. That's like Madonna. <sighs> Back in Madonna's day. Dude, but see, I was also thinking, you know, something you said, it made me think about it. Like, there was <laughs> Lauren Hill, give your boy some money over there so he didn't need to go doing all that bullshit. He just looked out for the guy. She probably knew he was fucked up. She's like, I had to come in through these motherfuckers. I gotta fucking dance with the one that brought you. Mm. And that dude, 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 something's wrong with Pross with Michelle. He had too many connections. He was too easily getting into places. But I'll tell you something. I was thinking about music and I was thinking about old timey music. Like, like old Susanna or she'll be coming around the mountain. I was thinking about that this morning. And I'm like, that music was a hit. At one time, she'll be coming around the mountain or oh Susanna was the chronic for its generation. Maybe more than the chronic because there was no radio. I mean, really think about that. That means somebody showed up at a campfire or a saloon and was like, hey, I got a song. It's called Old Susanna. <laughs> Don't you cry for me. So I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. And people were like, that's lit. Right. That's legit hit. Not only, it's, it's more than let's get buying an album because you had to learn the song and take it with you where you're going. You might have had your own song. Everybody could play the banjo back then. There was no radio. And that was a smash hit. Bigger than Sinatra. And I'm not, no disrespect. Bigger than Sinatra. No radio, no records. Oh, Susanna. Which means... Well, go ahead. I was going to say, but back in the day, they sold sheet music. And that's what started the whole publishing that's music right. craze. That's why there's uh, publishing rights and the performer's rights. So people would go into the store and buy sheet music, take it home, and play that shit. Oh, Susanna was such a big hit that they put it on a piece of paper and people looked at the paper and were like, oh, that's a fucking... That's fire. And some people are like... 
hey, you just put old Susanna on that paper. Now that belongs to me. <laughs> you can't put it on a different piece of paper. Yeah, I, people, got, I own that shit. Uh, yeah, you can't be making copies of that song, my friend, not without paying me some. <laughs> no. Think about that. Not only that, but think about this. That means the chronic at some point in the future is going to sound like Oh Susanna to the future people. Oh. That's weird. It's going to be a kid song. I know that sounds crazy, but that is what that is. Look at Steve. I thought when I say this, and then Steve's like, "Ah, oh, it talking? already is." I mean, <laughs> you already listen to some of the some of the old hip hop, and you're like, "What that shit, dude? What were they listening to, Boogie? Ghetto <laughs> Blaster, with it, you know, right? MP3, and they didn't even have an SP1200, like a beat machine. You know, it already sounds like prehistoric and shit, some of it, right? Well, I think about so- like Wild Thing, like Tone Loke Wild Thing. Yeah, that's like a kid's song now. Dude. Yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Dope. It's a limerick. But some of the some of so is so is some of Run DMC. Oh, right. For sure. Oh, for it's sure. Total, like, you know, that's that's your starter pack. That's your <laughs> that's your, that's how you get in, you know? You start there, kid. Chew on that for a little while. Let's see how you do with that. Some no no linoleum on the floor. Get some fat shoelaces. Yeah. See if you got B boy in your blood, huh? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Now you're looking one hundred percent. That's correct. Wow, that's a heavy scene, man. Hey, uh Well who did the fat girl on my jock song? Who I don't know. That was easy, but it was on the NWA album. Okay, we got uh, uh, Okay, so well, listen, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey, you don't end up in that situation by accident, do you? No, no, you no, don't. No, I'm, no. I'm gonna make a prediction. Huh? He's gonna come out smelling like a rose. He's not gonna do much time, and he's gonna wind up keeping some of that money. <sighs> I like to listen to Chumahan's predictions. So he'll go do five years, then all of a sudden somebody will be like, oh, let's let that guy out. Let's, you know. He'll just, they'll just drop out of the public eye and nobody will care anymore. He'll get to keep his money and go off to his little fucking hip-hop retirement. That'll be the end of that. We, might, we think they'll release him from prison without even saying anything? So <laughs> people think, just think he's locked up. But hey, look, you're going to go hide out and you're not going to move. Yeah, for 100%, dude, because this thing came out of nowhere like, too, right? Like, so was, then, then let me ask you this. Yeah. Did they kill that motherfucker in the jail? That dude. To oh. Thailand. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. No. They didn't kill that motherfucker, huh? He uh, slid out through a back door. No, no, no. They they got him. And they're going to fucking... They got... They got... Dude. You they, don't... You think they did? Who examined that body? I mean, I guess they said they have a guy that said, oh, that didn't look consistent with suicide or something. Yeah. But like... Did anybody? Are there pictures of that body? Well, you're never going to get pictures of that. Okay. I think we already know that. Like we already know there's. We're going to have to rely on someone's word for that. You're right about that, for sure. No one's going to get. Just like you don't know where JFK's brain is still. Right. Right. Sorry, there's just some. Somehow there's some bullet that wasn't even fired that was thrown in the brain with a spray. Let, the let like, me tell you, this is an American mystery box. Right. And if some shit gets in there, and sorry, nobody ever gets to fucking know the right, answer. Right, right, Stand right. Stand that Right, right. Kibosh. The kibosh. They put the kibosh. The maluch. The maluch. <laughs> the chalooch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chalooch. All right. Chalooch. Not, for, not for nothing, chalooch. <laughs> hey, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Enzo's Pizzeria yeah. in Westwood. Yeah. Okay? The best maluch in Westwood. Hey, man, the best. Ah, the best <laughs> moots. Your mother's moots. Like shoe lattice. <laughs> Fucking <it> tough. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, you know, thank you to Enzo's Pizzeria. Right. Uh, big shout out to Supermax Hardware. Yeah. Go to Supermax.com, SupermaxHardware.com. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cookies and vibes. Shout out to Burner and the fam over there. Yeah. And Estevan Oreo and the Soul Assassin. Yes. And my kids. Yeah. Vincent and Sophia. Right. I love you too. Yeah. And my grandson, Michael. Yeah. What you got, partner? I got uh, Ovando Bowen, LLP. We wear braids to court and we fucking win. Just so you know, we might not take up your case because we're too busy, but if we do, we put everything we got into it and we fucking win. That's what I got. Right. Yes. www.hardluckshow.com. That's what I got. Oh. What about you, mate? I got Bionic Sound System with Chris Boogie. Check him out. With who? Chris Boogie. It's my boy right there. Um, If you need any sound systems for DJs or bands, hit that man up. Um, Also, Got Mike Angelo Photography, and shout out to 
the Hard Luck Show itself. All the crew here holding it down as always. Yeah. Yeah. What you got, Matt? What you got, boy? What you got? King what Salmon. What you got, King Salmon? Yo, if you're out there and you're bad game is on shit, you can uh, go back and back and get a better cornhole Get bag fucking game. fired up. Professional <laughs> grade cornhole bags. Uh, <laughs> all right. You know, women don't get enough freaking <laughs> love, dude, in the DJ scene, man. And like we do about this time. <laughs> And like we do about this time, hasta la vista. Uh, yeah, King Salmon. Uh, you know, women don't get enough freaking love, dude, in the DJ scene, man. I, I, I'm no, uh, I'm no ghost to the uh, the cigarette butt bottle. Get zapped out. <laughs> get zapped out. <laughs> Hop up in the swoop, dude.